Well, hello there, ladies and gents. How the devil are you? Andy here, and today I'm going to be fitting this Senna Spider ST1 to this Schubert C3 Pro helmet. The Senna Spider ST1 is one of the newest and cheapest offerings from Senna, but don't be fooled by the cheap price. This one actually only costs 190 euros, because Senna have actually done away with a bunch of the features which a lot of people don't really need or use, things such as the radio, voice commands, and Bluetooth intercom itself. This thing is a mesh only intercom unit. So we're getting the same top end mesh communication that you get in the top end units like the 50R, 50S and the 50C, but instead in a nice small and cheap unit. Now I've already fitted one of these units to my HJC Alpha 90S Carbon. Check that video out with the links in the top right and in the description below. I've got a really exciting trip to Norway coming up with Ian, who you'll already have seen in the Croatia and Scotland tours. And this is actually his helmet. And before I go on a couple of stats and figures about this unit, it has Bluetooth 5.2 because it does still have Bluetooth but only to connect from the unit to the phone, there's no Bluetooth communication between the devices. Mesh intercom with a range of up to two kilometers or 1.2 miles. Audio multitasking, so you can have your intercom running while there's music in the background. HD speakers, but not the Harman Kardon speakers, which come in the top of the line units, the 50R, S and C. Smartphone app for iPhone and Android, and obviously upgradable firmware. So if we quickly unpack it out of the box, we have the unit itself, a boom mic, a wired mic, the loom, with the speakers on it, a USB cable with a USB-C connection, which is very nice to see, and with a right angle connection, so it's a lot easier to have it connected and charging the unit while you're using it. We've got a slide-in clippy clip, which pops up in between the EPS liner and the shell of your helmet. There's also a self-adhesive clip if you want to have an even more minimal setup, which just sticks onto the side of the helmet. Two little spongy Velcro spacer things if you want to have the speakers closer to your ears. The microphone, wind muffy jobs, and a bunch of Velcro clips and attachments for sticking it all into the lid. Oh, and also the indispensably dispensable quick start guide. Now I have already decided that we're gonna be using the boom mic because this is a flip front helmet. And I've also made the decision that we're gonna use the slidey clippy mount so that the adhesive one can go to the side as well. So before this escapes off the table, I'm gonna stick the microphone windshield onto the microphone, just very simply slides on there. And then these little hookies hold it in place. So it's not gonna be going anywhere. Bosh, that's on. So now we can get started on the helmet. That is a mighty shiny helmet you have there, Ian. Let's flip that open so I can see better what I'm dealing with. Clip that open. Oh, look at that. There's a Velcro bit as well. Nice touch shoe, but. So in the interests of clarity and visibility, I'm gonna take everything out. So first of all, the cheek pads just pop and hooked in to the main piece. That's quite cool as well. The neck piece is separate to the cheek pads. So with that out of the way, feed the strap through the impossibly fiddly hole in the cheek pad. I think if I was doing this without cameras, I would probably just leave this attached and stick it to the side. But if I do that, you're not going to see what's going on. It looks like it's actually riveted in at the back, so I am going to have to leave it hanging. Right. And that's the other cheek pad out. So then the main skull piece, one popper at the back and then clipped around the brow by these little clippies along the top there. And that's out. Okay, so now I can see inside the liner of this. Very nice. It's all soft, velvety lined. It must have something to do with the incredible quietness of these helmets. The Alpha 90S is all just standard polystyrene on the inside there. Sometimes helmets come with a Velcro pad ready to put the intercom speakers in there. This one doesn't have one. So we're gonna need to fit a couple of these beasties in there. So I'm just gonna use a sunglasses cleaning cloth to make sure there's no grease on there. These things are meant to be used with plastic sunglasses, so I'm pretty sure it's not going to cause any harm to the inside of the helmet here. Just to make sure there's no fingerprints or hair grease from the factory workers still on there. Oh, there is actually a hair mm, Schubert helmet with free DNA. Sadly, without Ian here currently to find out where his ears are going to go, uh, I'm just going to put them in the middle and hope that that's in the right place. So now, theoretically, I can already stick the speakers into their little recesses in the helmet here, but I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. I'm gonna stick the unit to the helmet first. And that is gonna come over here on the left-hand side, just behind the slider for the sun visor. So, slidey, clippy clip. So it's got this metallic tongue with a rubber backing on it, and then rubber backing on the back of the clip itself as well. And that simply slides in there. Actually, on second thoughts, this slider is connected to a cable which actually runs along the edge of the helmet here. And I think because I don't want this clip to interfere at all with the operation of that cable, I mean, it's inside of a cable sheath, but still, I don't want to pinch it or kink it. So I think I actually am going to use the adhesive mount after all. And the crazy thing is, the helmet has this little flat area and then a ridge 
and it looks almost as if this was made perfectly for this helmet because it fits in that little edge absolutely perfectly. I love it when a plan comes together. So once again, with the glasses cleaning cloth, and then pull the backing off of the sticky pad, but that's far forward as I can. Give it a good hard press onto the lid. And there we go, that is on nice and minimal, the lightest possible setup with this unit. And the intercom itself can now just clip on there, tidy. So now with the unit attached, I can go right on ahead and connect the cables. So first off, just to make sure we've got enough slack. The cable itself, proprietary connector with this little clippy thing that pops up like that. That plugs into the bottom of the unit. And then this little clippy bit clips into the little lugs there, locks everything into place, so that's not going anywhere. I've just thought of something else. We've actually had helmets before. You can actually Velcro the speakers onto the cheek pad liners. With this one, doesn't work. So sort out this cable salad, as the Germans say. Oh, mein Kabel Salat, das ist ein Sauerei. And then, quite obviously, the shorter cable is going to be the speaker closest to the unit itself. So just plonk that into place. We can give that a bit of a forwards, full backwards movement because this recess is elongated. We'll do that once Ian's ears are here to test where they want to go. There we go, there's speaker number one dead center. Speaker number two then comes over this side, also dead center. And then I will tuck this cable in between the side piece and the back piece of the EPS liner. So same on the other side, just tuck the cable in that gap. And then the microphone cable, this little red connector, once again, a proprietary connector for Senna, is to be connected up to the boom mic. And you can't get it wrong because there's a little triangular recess on the connector. There's a little triangular outcrop on the plug. And they just snap together. And then this microphone looks like it can potentially go on either side. So for a little bit of weight balancing, it's very minimal and it's probably mostly pointless. But I'm going to put the microphone on the right hand side to balance out the weight of the intercom on the left hand side. Every little helps, ladies and gents. But as you can see, there's nothing to connect the microphone to, so I'm going to need to use another one of the sticky pads at this point here, just to give the microphone a mounting position. Once more with the glasses cleaner, take one of the little oval sticky pads, peel off the backing, and then with the microphone roughly where his gob's going to go, push that into place. Peel the microphone off of the Velcro and then just flatten that down nicely. And once again, because it's elongated and because I've put it that way round, I can now have a bit of backwards adjustment and a bit of forwards adjustment. All it is is really an anchor point because the cheek pad itself is actually going to hold all the boom stuff in place. So it's just to stop the microphone from sliding backwards and forwards once you've found your position. So now I need to deal with all of these cables and things. I think the easiest way to do that, first of all, is to capture this microphone cable here by using the rearmost popper on the cheek pad. There we go. So that is now captive there. It can't fall out the bottom of the helmet. And as we've come this far, I might as well poke the strap back in. So poke that first of all through the webbing strap that's there, and then stuff everything through the cheek pad itself, making absolutely sure that the strap isn't twisted, nothing is snagged. Very important that that works properly as it keeps the thing on your head. Right, so that's that in. Now do up the foremost popper, uppermost one. Although now I realize I've forgotten the fact that this bit and that bit are connected together, aren't they? So I'm gonna have to change my order a little bit. Right, so skull piece hooks firstly onto the clip of the cheek pad, and now I can connect that back to the helmet. Once again, making sure not to trap the microphone cable in the popper, because that would not be beneficial to the functioning of the wire. Okay, and then back on the front again, on the side. Try and get a bit more light in here so we can see what's happening. So now I'm just gonna lay the cables here as flat as I possibly can. I need a better vantage point for this. Coming up and around where the popper's gonna go. And I'm actually gonna tuck the microphone connector up here at the top, because the last thing I want is that causing a pressure point on the head. And the rest of these cables I'm going to run into this venting channel there. But yeah, there's a venting channel here, there's a venting channel there, so I can actually run the cables into that, therefore ensuring there's not going to be any pressure on the head of the wearer. With that in place, put that rearmost popper in, and then I can come around, connect the rear end of the headpiece onto the cheek pad, clip that in place. And that's when I realize I may run into a bit of a problem here because this thing is completely continuous around the bottom of the helmet. So there's no way for me to put the cable in and go around this. So I'm going to have to have the cable come completely around the outside of this collar piece, which I don't think will be that much of a problem. And with that in place to make sure we've got the slack, connect the cheek pad back on. And on the front, 
one at the top and now should be able to just pop this in there's a tiny little protrusion on the end of the rib that goes around the collar and that needs to pop into a little recessy sockety type piece at the front of the helmet to make sure that this collar piece isn't going to pop out so I need to first pop that under slide it forwards and the little nupsy clips into the little hole and then the rest of it just pops into place further captivating all of those cables and things and here on the other end just need to give it a bit of force and that pops into its little recess as well. So forgot, I need a strap to connect the helmet to the head so you might want to poke the strap through. Poke the strap first of all through this loop here which I've now just found out is actually connected to these little webbing straps at the back which are holding the cheek pad onto the back of the helmet so it's all connected and therefore all very important. So pull that completely through. Make sure there's no twists. I'm going to take a helmet apart with it facing away from you. It's quite a challenge. That's really tight. I'm having trouble getting that through, so I'm going to try a little trick. Here we go. Connect the chin strap. Use that to pull it out. There we go. So that's the other end of the chin strap through. Nothing's twisted, nothing's kinked. Connect the front popper, connect the top popper. And then the last poppers are these ones between the collar piece and the chin strap. Pop that in. Make sure everything's sitting comfortably. Same on the other side here to say this was a lot quicker and a lot easier with the HJC but I do also respect how well put together this helmet is. Everything is very secure, it's not going anywhere. And to stop these cables getting all lively and jumping around the place I'm just going to slide this little cable tidy thingy and use that to keep everything nicely tucked up here in the neck piece. So just to try and make things a bit more tidy I've actually stuck the second one of the little overly shaped velcro paddy jobs on there and then using this little clip and the velcro on the back I can use it to capture the cable and hold that onto the edge of the lid there closer to where it's going into the helmet so now that cable is nice and tidy and it's going neatly into the back of the helmet there not going to be bothering anybody when it's flapping around in the wind so then last but by absolutely no means least final reconnection brow hooky tabby things and here we go. Those are all the brow clips clipped in. Tuck the cheek pad flaps away. And that is the Senna Spider ST1 fitted expertly, of course, to the Schubert C3 Pro. It's a pretty tidy small unit. Standard Senna jog dial action there. Push button, jog dial, phone button at the back. Other button there, which I need to find out what it does. And also the little flip up antenna for the mesh communication. Oh, and also the USB charging port at the bottom there. With this little rubber bungy door thing, which is a lot easier to put in than the little rubber bungy door thing on the Cardo Packtalk Slim. That thing was a nightmare. This one pops into place nicely. So I guess what I really should do just as a quick test is turn it on and make sure the thing works. So to do that, we push the jog dial in, phone button at the back. Hello, phone pairing. And it goes immediately into phone pairing mode. I'm not going to do that now, I'll do that later, so just switch that off. Goodbye. Because I'm not going to go into features and details about this thing yet, because obviously I haven't used it yet. I'm going to take this away. We're going to use both of these units on the trip in Norway. Two weeks of charging around in the fjords, chatting nonsense to each other with these two units. And after that, I'll have a pretty good idea of what I think of it. And I'll give you a full review. And also get yourself subscribed to the Andy Man Cam channel to see those videos as soon as they come out. I'm really, really excited about this trip. I suppose I should just give it a quick test to make sure there's nothing that's uncomfortable and out of place. Oh, it's a snugger fit than my HTC, but thankfully me and Ian appear to have the same size and shape head, so it's actually quite a tight, tidy fit. But there we go, that fits lovely. I can feel the edge of the cable at the back of my neck, but I'm sure that's something you could get used to, or we'll deal with a solution later. Maybe poke a hole through the collar. Didn't want to do that when it's not my helmet, probably would have considered it if it was. Because if I poked a nice tidy little hole just through the soft fabric of the collar piece here, I'd be able to tuck the cabling in through there and everything would be a lot tidier. Opening and closing the lid doesn't seem to affect the microphone too much. That is the Senna Spider ST1 mesh only intercom unit fitted to this Schubert C3 Pro and also to my HJC Alpha 90S Carbon. Thank you so very much for watching. If you found this video interesting at all, do give it a thumbs up, show it to somebody else who might be interested. Otherwise, I've been Andy, this has been the Senna Spider ST1 Intercom, and these have been a couple of helmets. See you next time. Ta-ra!